Good morning. As we get ready to start our devotion this morning, I, I just kept keep thinking about our lesson this morning, talking about love. And we had a great lesson. Minister Henry taught us real well. And as I thought about, you know, how he taught about how we should be loving, I thought about 1 John 3 and 16, where he talks about, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And that's the ultimate love. I'd like to say good morning, everybody. It's good to be alive. And another thing Robert Henry said about hope, we have to always keep hope alive. We got to keep hope alive each and every day of our life. We need Jesus to guide us. May we all have a word of prayer. This morning, Heavenly Father, I'd like to thank you for watching us last night. Thank you, Lord, for able us to open our mind, open our eyes, come to our right mind to start this day. Lord, we need you. I'd like to thank you again for all that you've done for us. I'd like to thank you for food and water and the clothing in our right mind this day. Lord, thou deep, we can't make in this world, Heavenly Father. The things going on north, south, east, and west. Ask your Lord, please just guide our mind through it all. Ask your Lord, Lord, please go with the sick, go with the shut-in, go with the flick of the wheel, Heavenly Father. Ask him, please let them all raise their eyes towards you, because you are the one that can hear and answer prayer. Ask your please just guide this nation, guide us all as we make this week. Ask you, please guide everybody. Ask you, please go my church family. Keep your love arms around us all. Let us always be able to speak, listen, and talk to one another. Go the right way that we need to go. And should please touch my pastor. Let guide him. Keep his love arms around him, his family. Without thee, Lord, we can't make it in this world. We can't do without you. should please go with us this week. Prayer for Christ's sake. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> All right. <then. laughs> All right. Y'all ready to bless the Lord with me? Come on in. 
jump for joy with me. Jump for joy with me. Come on and jump for joy with me. Jump for joy with me.
I'm gonna say something, Jay Run, and I want you to make the saxophone say what I say. I want you to, I'm gonna sing something. I'm gonna do it. Ain't gonna be real, real hard. Just I'm simple, and I want you to get the saxophone to imitate me. I'm ready.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise Just pray. And move out of the way. Glory to God. We are thankful once again to be here. First of all, I want to thank Deacon Bennett for the scripture. Deacon Fountain Taylor for the prayer. Sister Alicia, we thank you so much for coming on and bless the Lord with me. Amen. That's what we came to do today. And then our musicians came on with prayer. Changes things. Amen. Amen. And how you know that God is moving because my sermon is about mourning and praying this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer does change things. And that is something that is required of us. Amen. 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 Giving unto to the most high God. We thank God for being able to be here today. Amen. 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 I must say that I'm thankful last weekend I spent my weekend going to funerals, but this past weekend I spent my weekends going to things that were uplifting, heal her ministries and awards ministries and things to remind you that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. In recognition of our pastor back there, Pastor Moore, God bless you. God bless you. Sister Moore, in her absence, and our other ministers, Reverend Washington and Reverend Moore, we give God, we thank God for you all being here, amen? We thank God for each and every person that is in this building, each and every person that may be joining us on social media. We give God the glory. We give him the praise. And we give him the honor because it could have been another way. Amen? Amen. Any thankful folks in the house this morning? Amen. Any thankful people in the house? Think about what you're thankful for. And every time you think, you be thankful. Amen? When you think about how he got you up, be thankful that you got right. up. Amen. Amen. When you think about that your eyes work and that your body worked, be thankful. Yes, some of us are of age, and yes, this hurts. <laughs> yes, Lord. But God gave us this body. He created us to worship him. By any means that you have to worship him, by the stretching of your hands, by the waving of your hands. If you're like me, if you got it all in the legs. If you're like Brother Calvin, you got it all in the voice. Brother J. Ron in the blowing and Brother Philip in the beating. Think about the goodness of God yeah, and what he has done and what he is doing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to ask you guys to turn with us to Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 17 through 24. Amen? Amen. If you all would, please stand for the reading of the word. Amen. Jeremiah, the ninth chapter, 17th verse says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider and call for the morning women, that they may come and send for skilled waiting women, that they may come. 18 says, Let them make haste. And take up wailing for us, that our eyes may run with tears, and our eyelids gush with water. For a voice of wailing is heard from Zion, how we are plundered. We are greatly ashamed because we have forsaken the land, because we have been cast out of our dwellings. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O women, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth. Teach your daughters wailing, and every one her neighbor a lamentation. For death has come through our windows, has entered our palaces to kill the children, no longer to be outside, and the young men no longer on the streets. Speak, thus says the Lord. Even the carcasses of the men shall fall as refuse on the open field, like cuttings after the harvester. 
and no one shall gather them. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glorifies God, who, who glories glory in this, that he understandeth and he knows me, that I am the Lord, exercise in loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight, says the Lord. Lord, we thank you for the hearers, doers of your mighty word. Amen. Amen. Our subject for today is your participation is required. Amen. Amen. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just ask you to remove Jackie. Lord, I just ask that you will use me as a vessel, oh God. Lord, use me like you've never used me before. Lord, allow your anointing to flow in this place, oh God. Lord, to touch their hearts, their minds, and their souls and remind them of who you are and whose that they are. Father, we say thank you, oh God, for an opportunity to stand before your people once again. Lord, we just ask you to bless, oh God. Lord, we ask you right now. Lord, forgive us of our transgressions, oh God. Lord, I thank you for being a forgiving God. Lord, I thank you for being a loving God. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. These are other blessings we ask in your darling son. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Your participation is required. In a world of the demands of life, most of the time we can choose what we want to participate in. As an employee, you might want to skip a meeting. <laughs> you might want to skip a team building exercise or an invitation to hang out with your coworkers for dinner. As a church member, you may decide that this ministry is just not for you. As a musician, an opportunity to, to perform with other musicians, and you will recommend it, but you don't feel this opportunity is for you. Hmm. You feel like you're not ready. As for parents and grandparents, their issues are occurrences in your loved one's lives that you choose not to participate in because of one reason or another. As of today, no matter your level of education, your title, your choices, your limitations, there is a situation right now that your participation is required. You don't need any new clothes. Ain't no traveling involved. No particular colors. Your hair can be a mess. Your nails don't have to be done. No makeup. Men, you don't have to have a truck. No need for your best equipment, Brother Phil. No gloves required to participate in this challenge that is required of you. You might ask, what is required of me? I want you to look at your neighbor. Your participation is required. You're required. That's right, tell them you're required. You're required to wail. Tell them you're required to wail. You're required to lament. You're required to cry out for the sins of our people that have chosen a life of sin. Tell them again, you are required to, your participation is required. Amen. Amen. For the sins of our people, they choose to live a life of lying, cheating, and the list goes on. But most of all, 
They refuse to live a righteous life. Choosing to disobey the instructions of God. Many of us have witnessed, and we are witnessing the tragedies of our world. And even in our own families, and sometimes even in our own homes. We're living in a time when little or no discipline has become a thing of the past. And unruliness, drugs, alcohol, and violence are just a few things on the forefront of being an everyday event. What will it take to alert a dying world that God is allowing these things to happen because of our disobedience? What will it take? How devastating will situations be before we realize that there are people of God like Jeremiah who is given the warnings and not many are listening and not many are obeying. Are we headed for a Babylon takeover? Your participation is required. When we look at Jeremiah and how he talks about Calling, well, when we talk about Jeremiah, many of us know that Jeremiah is the weeping prophet. His role was to prophesy to the southern kingdom of Judah during a tumultuous time. Jeremiah was chosen by God even before his birth to be a prophet to the nation of Judah. He delivered the words of the Lord during the reigns of King Judah. Josiah, Jechiah, and Zedekiah. However, his messages were often met with indifferences and rebellion. Jeremiah grieved deeply over the wickedness of his people and the impending pending judgment of their sins had provoked God. His warnings went largely unheeded. And he responded to Judah's rebellion with tears of mourning. Your participation is required. God's plan for Jeremiah involved loneliness and suffering. Yet the Lord was always, always with him. Jeremiah was forbidden to marry or having children, which spared him the pain of witnessing his family being torn apart when the Babylonians invaded Judah and destroyed Jerusalem. Despite the personal isolation and rejection that he faced, Jeremiah courageously bore the burden of being Judah's prophet. His obedience marked him as a man set apart. Carrying his cross faithfully. In our world today, many who heed God's call experience similar challenges. Their voices may seem to be lost in the wind, but like Jeremiah, they weep for the fate of those that have been deceived by evil. Jeremiah's tears reveal the heart of God. And even Jesus wept over those facing judgment when we weep for lost souls God himself joins us in sorrow Jeremiah's legacy as the weeping prophet serves as a reminder of the compassion and the burden that comes with proclaiming God's truth as we go back to Jeremiah 9 and we're going to start at the uh, Jeremiah 9. We're going to start and kind of work through the scriptures down to 17. Oh, that my head were waters, and that my, and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place for travelers, that I might leave my people and go from them. For they are adulterers, an assembly of treacherous man. 
Jeremiah had lamented over Judah. He had prophetically seen them conquered and exiled to a land that they were not familiar with that. He expressed the idea that he didn't have enough tears or enough time to adequately express the grief over the slain daughter of the people. Because there was something tender and symptomatic about Jeremiah's tears, they were good. Such waters will be turned into wine at the wedding day of the Lamb, for which purpose they are kept safe in God's bottle. Oh, that I had a wilderness as a lodging place for travelers, that I might leave my people and go from them. Jeremiah here was filled with sorrow, overcoming the judgment of Judah. But he was also filled with a sense of disgust over their sin, so bad that he wanted to leave his people and get away from the corruptions of Jerusalem and Judah. Can you imagine when you look at what's going on in the world today? Many people are looking for somewhere else to move because where they live right now has now turned into a place of trouble a place of devastation. And can you imagine that they feel like, Jeremiah, I just want to get somewhere all the way out there, away from my folks. We've all said it. I'm just trying to get away from my folks. We've said it. Simply because we see what's going on in, with them. Even in a lonely lodging in the desert, he preferred to be out there by himself than to be amongst his people. You all, we have a job to do. When Jeremiah talked about the treacherous men, all they did was evil. They were guilty of, or they indulged of doing, of being betray, betraying people, or e even being deceptive. Does anybody hear what's being said right here? that's going on right now. And like their bow, they have bent tongues for lies. They're not valid for truth on the earth, for they proceed from evil to evil. Glory. Some of you have watched. Some of your family members, some of your friends go from one thing to another. No matter how you pray, they go from one thing to another. Yesterday they stole from the store. Today they stole a car. Next week it might be they taken somebody's life. From evil to evil. Does anybody see Judah and us? It's looking like we're standing in the mirror. And they do not know me, says the Lord. Everyone take heed to his neighbor. Do not trust any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant. He's going to do what he has to do to get over you. Scary. And every neighbor will walk with slanderers. Everyone will deceive his neighbor. I know some of you have witnessed where you've walked with someone and had a conversation with someone and it was from the depths of your heart. And when it came back to you, whoo, it was not told the way you told it. All right? Well, baby, she said this, that, and the other. But you know it's all her fault because she could have done it a different way. Well, baby, he did this, that, and the other. But it's all his fault. But in the conversation with you, Brother Phil, baby, I'm sorry you're going through this. We're going to pray that you get better. We're going to pray that your situation changes. But now as soon as I get to J-Run, well, Philip calls that himself. 
He should have done this. He should have done better by Miranda. He should have done better by his children. You know he should have done this. We're reading Jeremiah from so many years ago, but yet we see us. We're standing in front of the mirror. Everyone will deceive their neighbor and will not speak the truth. And the Bible says they have taught their tongue to speak lies. Jesus, you've taught your tongue to speak lies? Isn't lying one of the seven abominations of God? Glory to God. They weary themselves to commit iniquity. So you take your time to plot and to plan and to draw it out and to write it out. What wrong you plan to do? Glory to God. Your participation is required. Like their bow, they have bent their tongue. That's all they want to do is lie. All they want to do. Glory to God. And we've seen that. We've had to pray about this thing. We've all had family members and folks that you, when they come, which is, oh, oh, here come that lying. What's her name? All she do is lie. Let me go ahead and turn this down. Let me go ahead and just move my mind to another place. God is a God of truth. He's definitely a God of truth. And they were so far divided from God. Not just so far divided. This says that they had rejected God. What do we see? Are people rejecting God now? Those of you that share the word, that share the gospel with people, those of you, you don't even have to have a title. When you try to tell people, you know, there's a better way. Well, this way works for me. This works for me. It might work for you right now. But I want you to know that there's a God on high that you got to answer to. You got to answer. The word says every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is the Lord. So right now, alcohol might be your Lord. Weed might be your Lord. Old Johnny Boy might be your Lord. Old Susan Q might be your Lord. But in the end, every knee shall bow. They proceed from evil to evil. And God says, they do not know me. How is it that you do not know the same God that brought your forefathers out of Egypt? How is it that you do not know the same God that has carried you and taken care of you all of this time, regardless of what it was that you were going through? Yet and still, he said, they do not know me. They won't speak the truth. They're practicing evil. Oh, Jeremiah, can't you see Jeremiah just crying? Lord, I'm going to tell them what you told me to say. But Lord, they're not hearing me. Not only are they not hearing me, they don't even pretend to hear me. Those of you in here that are parents, when you're talking to your children, and sometimes they're looking at you. <laughs> and then sometimes they're like, just keep talking. They don't say it, but you know that's what they mean. <laughs> Jeremiah had a call on his life. Jeremiah had to do what God had told him to do. Think about the ministers and the, the preachers and so forth. They have a call on their lives. They have to do what God has instructed them to do. And there's a scripture that said, be not afraid of their faces. So regardless of what's going on, and people are looking at you strange like, I don't want to be bothered. God has put this assignment on you. And when God has put this assignment on you, it is yours. If you got to walk them down, if you got to chase them down, if you got to call them, if you got to drive by and say, look, Brother, I just need to share something with you. I need to let you know that God loves you. God wants you to change your direction. God wants you to hear his voice because the direction that you're going in right now is going to cause devastation. And not just devastation in your life. We know from reading the Bible that there are times that what you do, 
you may not suffer for. But what you do if it does not catch your children? It might catch your grandchildren. And the Bible lets us know, so we must be aware of the things that we choose to practice. If we choose to practice evil, our children are going to practice evil. If you choose to practice deception and lying, and one thing that I've seen, that I've seen the older people that lied and did stuff, and then their children took it up to a whole nother level. Ooh, they know how to do the dramatics, the music, and it all. So be mindful of what you do because we are responsible for the lives that we are around. Not just for your children, but for those that you are around. We are responsible that, we sh that you should share the word of God, share the love of God with them. And do not be a stumbling block in their lives. Glory. The Lord of hosts says, Behold, I will refine them and try them. For I shall deal with the daughter of my people. Their tongue is an arrow shot. It speaks deceit. One speaks peacefully to his neighbor with his mouth, but in his heart, he lies wait. Glory. Shall I not punish them for these things, say the Lord? Shall I not avenge myself on a nation such as this? I will take up weeping and wailing for the mountains and for the dwelling places of the wilderness and lamentation because they're burned up so that no one can pass through, nor can any man hear the voice of the cattle. Both the birds of the heavens and the beasts have fled. They're gone. The Lord said, you keep doing what you're doing, the way you're doing it, and I'm going to allow the enemy to take control. And I don't know what you all see, but there are some concerns because the, it looks like the enemy is taking control in our families. It looks like the enemy is taking control in our lives. It looks like the enemy is taking control of our cities, our counties, and our states. We have to do something. Your participation is required. Glory to God. He said, I'm going to try them. A loving God said, I'm going to try them. He said, I'm going to refine them, and I'm going to try them. How many of you grew up, this song says, I'm yours, Lord. Try me and see. See if I can be completely yours. We sang that song as I did as a child. But I promise you, God has tried me to see if I could be completely his. Sometimes I fail. Sometimes I've wondered, and we all do, but you have to focus and get your life back in track with God. Glory to God. Who is the wise man that may understand this? And who is he to whom the mouth of the Lord has spoken that he may declare it? Why does the land perish and burn up in the wilderness so that no one can pass through. And the Lord said, because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice according to it. He said, but they walk according to the dictates of their own hearts. Hmm. Examine yourself. What's in your heart? Because that's what dictates our lives. That's what dictates our actions, our speakings. And God said, they've forsaken me. Glory. Realize that God designed us to be worshipers. Obedient beings. Instincts for worship and obedience that is not directed toward the living God, we're in trouble. Be careful what you worship or who you worship. Be careful who you are obedient to. 
Are you obedient to that ungrateful heart? Are you obedient to that evil that you choose to do that makes you comfortable? What are you obedient to? When Jeremiah said, consider and call for the morning women that they may come and send for the skillful wailing women that they make haste. As you know, during this time, whenever they called for the morning women or the wailing women, someone had died. Look at how Jeremiah is looking to the future. These have not died yet, but he wants somebody to come on and start mourning. They're mourning, he, he wants them to start mourning and wailing and calling out to God because here it is, a generation is about to be lost. He said the mourning women. And then he said for the skillful wailing women. Back in the Bible days, they taught them how to wail. They wailed, they were, they were professional wailers. They went from funeral to funeral and wailed. Not only did they wail for the funeral services, but they also went and sat with the family for time and time and time. Glory. Because they were participating in their mourning. But Jeremiah said, before all of this happens, I need you all to call. He said, I'm calling for somebody to just go ahead and start mourning even though they're not dead. He said, I'm calling for some skillful, wailing women, somebody that's going to cry out and say, Lord, help us. Help our generations. Help our nation. We're in trouble. The enemy is taking over. Help us. And then he talks about it. He said, and everyone hear her neighbor, a lamentation. When they practiced mourning and practiced wailing, it was loud. Loud, loud, loud. There was an alert. Something wrong is happening. Somebody is hurting deep down inside. We have to begin to wail. Mourn, pray, and I don't mean Jesus wept. I mean get down on your knees, get down on your face, and holler out to God, Lord, we need you. You've got to let God knows we need him, but one thing about it, if you let him know that you need him, he hasn't left you. He'll come to your rescue. And he told them to call for the people to lament. And I had to go and, and dig up because I thought I knew what lament means. But lament is a form of worship. In your lamenting, even though you're distraught, even though you're hurting, even though you're in distress, you turn to God. Just like in Psalms, they said, oh, God, how long, oh, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? At this point, the person is choosing, at this point, it's that person in pain, hurting, choosing to talk to God about what's happening. The four elements of lament is turn to God. The second one is bring your complaint to God. Every lament features some kind of complaint. How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? It's more than a sinful rehearsal of our anger and our Issues going on, but it, un it identifies that we got some issues going on. Gosh. Act boldly and seek for help while you're in pain. Consider me and answer me, oh Lord my God. Light up my eyes. Least I sleep the sleep of death. Least my enemies say I have prevailed over him. Let my foes rejoice because I am shaken. Sorrow can create a deadly silence 
that will give in to despair. There's no hope. Everything's fine. I'm good. I'll be all right. Be careful how you handle those things. And in the midst of your lamenting, choose to trust. Regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what you're seeing out there and what you're dealing with wherever you go, trust God. You got to trust God. Your participation is required. We have to mourn. Mourning ain't just about a dead person. All right? It's not about a death. We have to mourn relationships sometimes. Whether it be spouse, whether it be friends, whether it's family, co-workers, not they are, that they are physically dead, but you got to mourn for the fact that you know that they need to know Jesus. And they don't want to accept him. But yet you see the same thing going on in their lives as Jeremiah saw going on in Judah. They're sitting there and they're lying to you. And you know they're lying and you're just smiling. They're doing deceitful things. And you're just smiling. And I'm talking about me because I have dealt with that situation and I just smiled through all of what the people did. We, you talked about that, Brother Henry. And they said, well, why don't you argue? Why don't you fuss? Because I trust God enough to know that that door is going to open. And I'm going to get the opportunity to witness to that person that that door is going to open and I'm going to get a chance to even lay hands and pray on that person. Because while they think they got it, they're deceitful and evil plots and plans. You know what your plan for me, but you don't know what God's plan for me is. You know that you plan to stop me here, but God said, oh no, that's not where you're stopping. I got more for you. You all we got to pray. We got to lay on the floor. And it's not just for women. Because the Bible tells us what? That Jeremiah cried too. There's a reason to cry. But God told him when you stop delighting in yourself, he said, delight in me. So I can delight in what I got, what I own, what God blessed me with. And it can cause me some problems. But when I began, when I decided it was time to delight in the Lord, things change. If Judah had to change their mind and stop delighting in Judah and the things that they were enjoying, they were enjoying the false gods. And the reason they were enjoying the false gods, because the false gods gave them what they wanted. You know, we talk, they, how they would sacrifice their children, sexual activity, all of this kind of stuff. And we have to be mindful as Christians that we don't get caught up in the things of the world. We don't want to become Judah, but yet and still we, can't, we see some Judah stuff going on. When will you begin to wail? When will you mourn the death? of your family members? When will you mourn the death, and I don't mean physical death, of families and friends? Because you know they have lost their connection with God. And they need to return to God. Just like Jeremiah, all of us should be making a call. Return to the Lord, trust in God. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. We're living in a tough time, you all. But I want you to know that there is a God. That is, it seems like it's not going to get any better. But when you go down on your knees, and when you get tired of going on your knees, sometimes you got to lay on the floor on your face. And you got to holler. You got to cry. And when you think it's time to give up, 
Brother Henry, when you said, be sure out of love you don't give up on any family member. Watch God do that for you. Watch God do it. I, I can say that, I, I, and it's not a brag, but I purchased a house 20 years ago. And I said, Lord, if you give me this house, I promise you, I'll do this and I promise you I'll do that. And I was tested. At one time, my child refers to it as the halfway house, but um, <laughs> she made a statement last year. She said, okay, this is it. The orphanage is now closed. The halfway house is now closed. But what she didn't realize is if you're in my house, you're covered. People have gotten out of prison and come to live with me. And if you know something about trusting God, why is it I had problems paying my bills before they got there? But yet and still, I was still able to feed them and buy them clothes. And still pay bills. While they were there, all I could do was share the word of God. Even when they didn't want to hear it, I gave them a hug. Even when they did, they would see me get dressed and like, where you going to go in church? You going to? You want a Bible? In our conversation, I introduced God. In my actions of being out in the yard, and y'all, everybody know that's where I like to be, they would hear me singing the songs of Zion. We all have to participate in praying for our people. We can't give up love. It's what's going to cover them. We can't give in to the enemy. Yes, you might have me right now. Because you know when the enemy strikes, he strikes. When you have a stepson that has, to, that has gone to prison for possibly killing somebody. And you're mourning, not just for the person that died, but for him. When you have family members that have gone to prison just because they didn't want to listen. But when the government returns them to you, I should have listened. These are the same things that I'm hearing and the same things that I hear Jeremiah say. They should have listened. We don't want to be Babylon. We want to be people that will call out into the call out the name of Jesus. We want to be people that will proclaim who God is in our lives and who God can be and what God can do in our lives. Our, your participation is required. When you leave me today, if you don't remember anything else, pray, cry, mourn, not just for your house, not just for your family, not just for your coworkers, but for our city, our county, our nation. Yeah. Call out. Lord, we need you. Lord, we need you. Because it seems like our children have lost their minds. But it's nothing but we have played with the enemy so much long. The enemy's having a grand time. You chose not to beat little Billy, Billy Bob, but guess what? Now little Billy Bob is a Billy Bob. My, my stepson shared this with me. He said, Mama, he said, after I went to prison, I realized I missed a few whippings. I needed some more. And apparently he didn't get enough because he went back. I said, okay. He thought I was going to fuss, didn't fuss. My nephew came back. He said, Aunt Jack, when you told me don't drive home, I don't know why I didn't listen. So he had 18 months to think about it. When God tells us not to do something, it might seem like it came from the mouth of somebody you didn't want to listen to. But there's something about a warning. And what comes after a warning? Destruction. Call out. Let people know God is real. Call out, pray, mourn, fast. We need the power to step, we need the power to put the enemy under our feet. Thank you. Please stand, the doors of the church open. If you don't have a place to worship, the 
doors open. We have Sunday school. And you, you heard some uh, deacons and Reverend Stokes allude to what we learn, and we, we, we learn about, we, today we talked about the love. What, what is love? We have Sunday school, we have worship service, and we have Wednesday night Bible study. Okay? So if you don't have the place to worship, we invite you to worship with us. If you don't know Jesus, here's an opportunity. See, we can't do these things about Jesus, okay? Uh, God is perfect, and none of us are, okay? We can't do anything pleasing to God without Jesus. No matter how much we try, we can't. If you don't know Jesus, here's your opportunity. If you haven't been baptized, here's an opportunity. We should be praying. We just talked about praying. We should be praying for those. If you're out there uh, online, our virtual option we have, you can contact Pilgrim Branch MB Church. Okay? Uh, we have a prayer line. We have a, a phone. Uh, there's our prayer line if you need prayer uh, for someone to be in agreement. We have to be in agreement with God's word. It's not our opinion, but we have to be in agreement with what God's word is saying. We need, we need God's perspective on things. Our human perspective is not worth anything, okay? No matter how successful you are in the world, no matter how successful you are at home, we need Jesus. So the doors are open at this time. Thank you, Reverend Stokes, for that. You may be seated. I pray that you all um, get more than just saying I went to church today. But I pray that you all cultivate your own relationship with Jesus Christ. You have to cultivate your own relationship with Christ. It's a personal relationship. Jesus has all wisdom. He has all of the answers. God created everything, okay? So you need a relationship with Jesus. We need Jesus, okay? At this time, we're going to uh, take an uh, uh, offering uh, in the hand of our uh, deacons and uh, ushers. It's time for giving. And you can, I'm trying to read that. Uh, there, there. <laughs> Uh, you can mail a check to uh, Pick and Branch MB Church, or we have in person, or you can, we have a Gillify app, Pick and Branch MB Church. Thank you for your gen generosity. Ushers, it's. Um, give us some marching music. You know, God's kingdom is joyful, it's no sad thing. Living in, with a relationship with Christ is joyful. It's make you want to dance even where there's not any music. But we have some music. We have our musicians. Let's remember our, on Saturday, April 27th, on Saturday, April 27th, from 10 to 12, uh, is our Pickle Branch uh, Women Prayer Brunch, okay? I'm looking at the screen back there, but I don't have my reading glasses, they're over there.
Okay, it's, it's a joyful time, y'all. Okay? Having Christ in your, in your life is not a chore. Oh, I got to follow all these rules. Knowing Jesus is joy. It's happiness. A happiness that you, you and those of y'all who know Jesus know it's a happy experience. At this time, do we have any guests to acknowledge? <laughs> 